we're going to learn a little bit about, more about options. And, and in this video, we're going to talk about how, a, what is a diagonal spread option and how to set it up. And that's all I'm going to say, because I don't know anything and Danny knows all the stuff. So go for it, Danny. The diagonal trades that I'm posting in the Discord in particular are free earnings plays. So I will set up the trade uh, ideally about two weeks before uh, earnings are going to be announced with the notion being that uh, investors typically are optimistic about earnings and that tends to have stocks drift higher into earnings. Um, so you want to buy a call option that expires after earnings to take advantage of that bullishness. And then you sell a call that expires prior to earnings. And by doing that, that's the notion of it being diagonal. Um, the diagonalness of it is the difference in the days to expiration. So you have more days on the one that you own and less days on the other. And when you are short a call that expires sooner than the call you own, time decay is in your favor because the shorter uh, length of time left to expiration actually accelerates the time decay. So in this trade, the idea being that you're going to want to have exposure to the stock on the way up and uh, as days go by prior to earnings, but you do close it out before earnings. You don't want to hold it uh, into earnings because that's a binary event. You just don't know. It's a coin toss. I don't do coin tosses. I'm, I'm in the 70, 80, 80% 80 or higher realm of uh, probability of success. So by doing that, um, you end up uh, increasing your odds of success because you have the time decay in your favor and you have that bullishness prior to earnings. So it ends up being a winner a lot of times. Uh, so far, five for five uh, on the ones I've been posting. This is the option chain for Take Two uh, Interactive. They're a uh, gaming uh, platform or gaming company, actually. They develop video games. Um, and when people are stuck at home because of the pandemic, they're typically going to do pretty well. With the diagonal trade, you want to be doing this on stocks that are trending higher. It has to be a clearly bullish trend, and you want the stock above the 50 day moving average. Because you want bullishness, you don't want people that are like worried about uh, earnings reports and, and, and some sort of like pessimism in the stock because it's less likely to be in your favor to own a call uh, prior to earnings at that point. So you want an upward trajectory stock and, uh, and a healthy stock at that point. So take two okay. checks both of those boxes. It's well above all the moving averages, the 20, the 50, and the 200 day, and right near an all-time high actually, which is ideal really. Uh, you don't want it at the all-time high, literally paying top dollar, but near it is good. So in this particular scenario, you're gonna wanna buy the August 7th call that expires after earnings, and you'd be looking at buying, um, ideally you wanna buy with the delta being close to 0.5, as close as possible. So we'll go with the, the 155 here. I'll adjust the quantity afterwards. And then you wanna sell close to a 0.30 uh, on the delta. And in this case, I would actually go with a lower one here, um, which would be the 0.26. The reason being, um, if you do the 157 and the stock soars, you could actually end up having a locked in loss. So we'll do the 160. And you'd be selling that. We'll adjust the quantity now. I would probably only do about five of these myself. You'll see the buying power effect shows zero because it, it's actually a debit. You're going to be coming out of pocket the difference of these two. Let me lock it so it doesn't fluctuate. Um, so you'd be coming out of pocket 610 minus 140 dollars, 470 on each. So times five, it would be a 2350 dollar total risk on this trade. Um, so if you're not comfortable with it, do less. If you do one, then you're only out of pocket, you know, that, that 400 and some odd dollar risk instead, um, $470. So if you just do one. So with this trade, your exit is the day of expiration for that other call, because from that moment on, you'll start losing money on the time decay of just that call you'd be holding. And it would be very close to earnings at that point too. So with the diagonal setup, this is what your risk profile is going to look like. Um, this is why you want to pick a stock that is trending higher because if the stock were to go down, you'll see that your loss will go up quite a bit here um, because of the, the fact that you have a debit and you bought a call. Uh, that 155 call would lose a lot of value. So what helps it though is because it's, that call is post earnings, the value will actually be a little bit more sticky uh, than if it wasn't because people want to hold out for earnings. They're, they're very optimistic. They think there's going to be an earnings surprise most of the time. So you won't have that big loss, but the call that you're short, would lose value much quickly and head to zero um, because it expires prior to earnings and people are like, you know what, forget it. We, we should have bought one after earnings basically. So ideally I would say the stock probably ends up being closer to 157 or so, a little bit higher than where it's currently at uh, a week from now. And uh, at that point you'd end up being up about 50 bucks almost, which would be about a 10% return. Uh, you're talking about a $470 risk on the trade. And this is showing that hypothetically at the stock being at 157, you'd be up $48, that little purple number down here uh, when it's at 157, you'll see it there. Okay. So that's that's the basic concept of it. Um, 
I would tell you do do a few of these paper trades first. So you got to get a notion for it. Um, but the rapid time decay is what really helps out on this trade where literally if the stock just trades sideways, you end up making money on this because there's still that post earnings optimism for the stock for the call that you own. Um, but the call that you shorted that is going to expire prior to earnings is going to lose all its value. So a lot of times you'll make your money on that and sell the other call for near break even or a slight gain. Um, and in that case, you'd be looking at probably, I would say about 140 to $200 would be your sweet spot there. Uh, profit per pair at that point, assuming a slight appreciation on the call that is going to expire after the earnings catalyst and uh, the full, full profit on the other call is going to expire prior to earnings. So, okay. But you want to close it uh, on that day, on uh, July 31st. You would want to exit it then so that you don't have time decay, especially over the weekend uh, heading into uh, prior to earnings because they announced August 3rd, which is actually a Monday. So you definitely want to close on uh, July 31st. You don't want to own that. Uh, yeah. They report after the bell, but still, you just, the time decay wouldn't be in your favor. You, you lose that, all that time decay over the weekend where nothing's going to happen for a video game company anyways. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully that uh, made, all, made sense to you. If it didn't, join our Discord, and Danny will be more than happy to help you out trying to figure out all this option stuff because uh, it gets complicated. Yeah, walk you guys through it. And, and typically, I exit, exit these trades pretty quickly. Um, of the five, I think the longest I held was like four days maybe. Uh -huh. um, but most of them you end up exiting. Uh, my, my target is really right around that 10 to 20% range. Once I'm up that much, I don't want to be greedy. Um, and, and you just take the, take the profits and run and then move on to the next trade at that point. Right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, click uh, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time.